Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Gritty Hour. I have a very special guest today. This is, uh, I'm here with Asa Beckwith, who is uh, uh, a World War II veteran. Am I right, Mr. Beckwith? That's right. Yeah. Do you remember when you got in to the service? You were in the Army Air Force? Yes. Uh, it's funny, I, I was just having a conversation with, uh, in another podcast with uh, my nephew, who was sort of like a co-host of this thing. And I was explaining to him that it used to be called the Army Air Corps. Um, all of the planes we had were as part of the Army. And then uh, I think in 1943, if memory serves, it became the Army Air Force. And I think soon after World War II, I think 1947, the Air Force became its own, its own military branch. So you were in the Army Air Force? Do you remember, you remember when you went in? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Actually. Yeah. It was probably, if it was the, it was, if it was the Air Force, it was probably right, in, right smack in the middle of World War II. Yeah, yeah. Towards the end. Towards the end of World War II? Yeah. Yeah. So we were, uh, we, it was probably, it, was it after Normandy or after D-Day? Yeah. So we were already in Europe at the time. Yeah. When you got oh, in. Yeah. So what, what are you, you're 94 years old? Yes. So that yeah. makes sense, actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you would have been a tail a tail ender. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, do you remember go? Where did you go for uh, training camp? Was do you remember? Well, <clears throat> I started off in a special program that was called the Army. Oh, I have a memory lapse here. That's all right. Army Air Force. Army Air Force. No. Or Army R R T R O T C maybe. I can't remember. That's all right. But you did your basic. Uh, wait, do you remember where you did your basic? Well, what happened is that the Army officer came to the high school, uh -huh. which was in Pine Plains, New York. Oh, in Pine Plains, I just got a haircut there yesterday. Oh yeah, were you <laughs> satisfied? Yeah, yeah, he's a great barber. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that? You know that place over there, right across from the Stissing House? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's a he's a good barber. But yeah, I interrupted you. Sorry. So they they had a special program. It was called the Army specialized training program uh -huh. and they would uh, recruit you into the reserve. I see, okay, yeah. So then they sent everybody to college. I went to Syracuse University. Oh, good for you, yeah. And then <clears throat> I went from there to Rutgers. To Rutgers, yeah. And this was in the engineering program they had. Uh -huh. So things were great. Uh -huh. But they, they wanted to start a physical training program. Uh -huh. And the idea was that we would uh, mingle or play with their varsity teams. Ah. And uh, what the, sport? Football? Baseball? Football. Football, okay. And there was this one black man that was a veteran of World War II. Mm -hmm. He was in Europe. He was about 6'3" well over 200 pounds mm -hmm. and uh, he nailed me mm. and my uh, left leg ended up being like a bunch of cornflakes. Really? Wow. Was yeah. it on a tackle? Yeah, a block. Oh, a block. Okay. Yeah. So they sent me to the hospital, of course, and um, they set my leg, and about 15 minutes later, it came apart. Wow. And uh, they said my leg was like cornflakes. Mm. 
So they put me in one of these army ambulances, mm -hmm. which they slung the, the uh, stretcher from the ceiling and you went like that. Oh, like the ha a hammock for the leg? Yeah. Yeah. And uh -huh. how long were you laid up for, do you remember? Oh, for months. Really? Wow. What, what happened is they sent me to every hospital that was in the New York area. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few minutes after they said it, it would come loose again. Wow. So they finally decided they'd have to amputate my leg. Mm. And so they were sent me back to uh, the hospital in New Jersey mm. and they, uh, they had a system there where they had a roster and they uh, took a, a case by turns mm -hmm. and I looked out and I got a, a, a surgeon that was uh, considered to be one of the best in New York's area. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, in fact, there's no way we're gonna amputate the guy's leg. He said, I think I can fix it. So uh, that affected my army career. Well, sure, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I was in the hospital for a long while, then I, they sent me out to a convalescent hospital in New York, uh -huh. uh, Long Island. Oh, Long Island, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I was out there for probably six months. Mm -hmm. And then they, I went to New Jersey to uh, like a reassignment mm -hmm. place and <clears throat> so they almost asked me where I wanted to serve. Mm -hmm. I said the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So And that's when the Air Force was becoming its own branch, right around the same time? Uh, it was close to it, maybe yeah. six months. Oh okay. All right. So it was, uh, yeah, they were they were their own entity then. Yeah. Yeah, their own branch. Yeah. Well, after they started that in shortly after I got there, <clears throat> but they were fussing around picking out uniforms and so on and so. Oh, the new uniforms for the Air Force. Yeah. 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 I think I was discharged before it was actually a so, own entity. Oh, I see. So, yeah, okay. So Harry was Harry Truman was the president at the time, I guess. Because it would have been uh, 40, 47 or 8, I think, is where you were going through that. No, a little earlier. Early than that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we did get a letter when we... He became president. Mm -hmm. So because of my college experience, which was, I think, that they considered it more than it was worth. <laughs> but I was up in Syracuse for quite a while. Yeah. Were you able to finish college after the leg injury? Oh, no. No. I, I went back on active service. Oh. Went, Okay, so that guy that guy did wonders then. He yeah. went from uh, getting your leg amputated to uh, getting back into active service. Yeah. The guy did a hell of a job on your leg. Yeah, well, in Long Island, they took me before a board and uh, I was to uh, be discharged and a medical discharge. Uh -huh. And I refused it mm. because I didn't think that they were going to take care of it. And, Mm -hmm. Once I was out of the army, I was uh, not going to be considered. Yeah. So, while I was there, they were 
there are certain periods of time when they have like a graduation mm -hmm. and there were about 20 people that were reviewed and uh, we would uh, go up about four steps, walk across the platform and down four steps and there was a whole group of medical people observing mm -hmm. and after that was over they had offered me a, a medical discharge oh. and I uh, refused it. Oh yeah? And oh. Uh, it uh, was kind of something unusual. They were kind of put back. Yeah, yeah. So Good. then I was there in Long Island for about six months and then they sent me to New Jersey to, that was kind of a reassignment center. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wangled my way into the Air Force. Ah, oh, very good, yeah. And it was a strange thing. It was all based on the type of shoes that you were. Uh, like the size or? No, if you had combat boots, you're in the inventory. Oh, okay, I got you. All right, <laughs> stay away from those combat boots. <laughs> so if you're wearing uh, like a, uh, I don't know, dress shoes, you would you yeah. would get into the air force, right? Yeah. 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 So <laughs> the idea was to get those shoes. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. That must have been a big deal back then. Yeah. So then. So, I went there. They sent me out to uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh -huh. And since uh, I had the background that I did, they jumped me ahead. Oh. Because that really was when I was starting in the service. Mm -hmm. Even though I'd been there for yeah. a year or so. Yeah, well, because of the injury, yeah. yeah so. Once they saw that I had been in this special unit, they assigned me as an instructor oh. right off the bat. So then I got assigned a subject. You go to a library and you take out books on that subject mm -hmm. and you're a, uh, Instant expert. <laughs> yeah, if you know a little bit, you know more than most, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's good, though. That's, yeah. And how long are you doing that for? For the rest of my service. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I uh, got to teach aerial photography, a map reading. Uh, mm. uh, I got to teach some soldiers that were from the uh, Kayang Kaishek. Uh, Chinese National Army, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, oh, yeah, because they did come over here for training. Some of them did come so, over. Some of the Chinese uh, National Army came over here for training. Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah. And um, were they, uh, you don't speak Chinese, did you, or Mandarin? No, they no. had an interpreter. Oh, they did it through interpreters, okay. Yeah. I thought maybe, okay. So they didn't speak English either. No. Yeah. Interesting, though. Yeah. So I had an interesting time in the service, and mm -hmm. I uh, got to be the rank of a buck sergeant. And then it came time to get out, and uh, they wanted me to re enlist, and they gave me a, 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 a jump or two in rank. Mm -hmm. But I decided I wanted to go home. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for your service. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, so you came back home after that and off you went into the world or did you have a, a job lined up or? Well, yes, I, uh, I went to the uh, GI Bill. Mm -hmm. I went to Chicago to automotive mechanic school. Oh, okay. And after I got finished with that, I came back to Dutchess County, mm -hmm. got a job with the Packard Auto Agency in Poughkeepsie. And I worked there as a junior junior mechanic, mm -hmm. which you you swept the floor first to fix the flat tires, mm -hmm. and then they don't want they don't want you fiddling with the engines, you know, <laughs> until you get a little more experience. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Though, how long did you do that for? Oh, about four months. Yeah. Maybe three months. Yeah. I wasn't too happy with it. No, you didn't like doing it, yeah. Yeah, so. And then I met this old friend at the, the movie theater in Blind Plains one night. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going down to IBM tomorrow to uh, apply. apply for a job. Uh -huh. Hey, why don't you go with me? Uh -huh. So I went with him, and uh, <clears throat> it was snowing pretty bad, and we stood in line out in the parking lot. Uh -huh. And when I, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, have yourself a coffee. When I uh, got inside, the member, the man said to me, so, you want to work for IBM, do you? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he hired you right on the spot. <laughs> no, I'm like it. He did, well, he did. He didn't hire his friend, now. <laughs> so, so you got hired. We're here with Kevin Warren also is uh, sitting in the room with us. So, uh, he did it. My friend did not get hired. Uh, but they asked me to come back a few days later, and they sure enough they hired me. Wow! And I thought, well, heck, I don't have anything else to do. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so they uh, got me working on the typewriters. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, eventually. I became the person who made all the oddball typewriters. Oh, really? Ones with foreign type and ones that went the opposite direction. Wow. Uh, I uh, remember we made a whole bunch of uh, typewriters that were painted white for the Vatican. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And, uh, it was interesting. So then they decided they were going to move the typewriter to Kingston. So they want me to go to Kingston. Mm -hmm. And I was building, had some building projects in my front yard as a pile of cement blocks and other building material and they want me to move. Mm -hmm. So I said, I can't do that. And they, they said, well, we can move all of your cement blocks, all your building material. And we, we can help you find a place to live. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> I didn't take them up on it. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, we'll, we'll have to let you go. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they sent my records down to 
personnel, and they shut down the personnel. You can't do that. You can't fire that man. So they found a job for me and purchased him. Wow. They must have really loved you there. Oh, I don't know. Mm. So I was in purchasing for a while, and then my boss took a liking to me, and he was a, a guy that got into the right places at the right time. Mm -hmm. So the functional manager, the uh, manager under him, my manager mm -hmm. and <clears throat> myself became a little group for some reason. Mm. And um, I shortly were being told what to do, what to wear. And <clears throat> I had to wear a suit in the My suit should, should not have any crease where it hung on the hanger the day before. Mm -hmm. You buy the hangers that hold them by the cuffs. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were very particular, I guess. Well, I was being groomed. For management, yeah. And so, <clears throat> then, for some reason, well, they didn't like my what they called pork pie hat that uh -huh. I had bought. Uh -huh. And but I did my raincoat and my top coat pass muster. But uh, anyway, uh, an opportunity came along to take some tests for computer programming. Uh -huh. So I took the test and passed. They sent me to school, and I became a computer programmer. Wow. From analog to digital. And mainframe was still in its infancy then, huh? Mainframe computers were still... Well, yeah, except they were huge. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. They, well, yeah, that's what I was alluding to. And yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember those cards. Remember those cards? Yeah. They used to insert punch cards. Punch cards, yeah. So, yeah. So, how long were you doing that for? Till I retired. Oh, you were okay. Well, <clears throat> yeah. When I retired, I had about a hundred people uh, that I was responsible for. I think it was nine. Nine million dollars for the hardware, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> people from all around the, the country, California, Kingston, some place down south, Vermont. All these, we built a system that control all the plants, and control uh, all the what? The plants. Oh. So, uh, yeah, IBM was scattered all over the place back then, yeah. 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 And then they had me flying around the country, San Jose, Endicott. I had to go down to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> went down there in the parking lot fenced in with wire like a prison mm. because it was a bad place. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you remember where in Brooklyn? No? No. I could probably find that out. Yeah. I uh, went there once and uh, I wouldn't go back. Mm. I did every, everything by telephone. Mm. So what year did you retire, do you remember? It was back in the 80s, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe 
late 70s. Late 70s? Okay. Um, the guy Watson was still there, right? Was he still the head guy back then? No. Um, he was only a few years uh, after that. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, good. We're going to take a short break and uh, maybe we'll have a cup of coffee. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about what you did after you retired. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Asa. Okay, we're back with Asa Beckwith. And uh, we were just talking about your uh, career in IBM. Prestigious career, if I might say. And uh, you retired in the late 70s, early 80s, somewhere in that era, yeah. time frame. And... Uh, what did, what, what, what did you get into after that? Because I know you're not the kind of guy to sit on your laurels. Well, actually, I got into things before then. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, one, I was working on a typewriter. Some of the guys wanted to get sporting good for cheap. Sporting goods for cheap? <laughs> Fishing and hunting. Mm -hmm. So I ran into this salesman who was from Newburgh that represented a sporting goods uh, outfit that wholesaled. Mm -hmm. So he accepted me as one of his customers. So then I bought things from him for the my friends at IBM. I see, okay, yeah. So that was the beginning of a business, so uh, I ran the business from my home uh -huh. and so then I started to advertising locally in the paper and people brought guns that were old, they weren't modern or usable. Mm -hmm. So they traded them in on new guns. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you know, I'm in the antique You're in the antique gun business. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how things happen sometimes, yeah. And I got a New York State gun dealer's license in a powder magazine license. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I started printing a, a catalog mm -hmm. that all these antique guns that I took in trade for new guns, I put in the catalog and I started selling them all over the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I even sold some to people in England and some people in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that, that was... Uh, was it like a mishmash of guns? Like all like pre-1898 guns or? Yeah. Yeah. And Did you have any special ones over the years that you got in trade? Boy. One gun I bought out in Stanfordville that was a Winchester rifle that was presented to this lieutenant governor for some reason or uh -huh. another. And I sold that, I think, to somebody out in Ohio. And they were really thrilled with that thing. They thought it was a lot better than I thought. Ah, okay. Yeah. I and think. Did they, pay, did they pay up for it or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so then I started doing antique shows. Uh huh. And so then my wife, grandparents, who were on a farm, they had an auction, they were going to sell a farm and sell a 
contents of the the bars in the house. And uh -huh. So <clears throat> they did that and the day ended before they, they got everything sold so there was stuff left over. Uh -huh. So my wife wanted to do a show, the antique show, which was in Poughkeepsie, uh -huh. and uh, bring some of her grandparents stuff. Uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> she outsold me <laughs> two to one. Oh yeah, what kind of stuff did she have? Just stuff well, her parents had laying around or? Yeah, it was like, household stuff. Really? Wow. Yeah. Dishes and ah. quilts and yeah. so on. Yeah. She was a specialist yeah. in uh, sandwich glass. And glassware. Yeah. Yeah. So she got into that and, and uh, be, became so knowledgeable that uh, in three or four years she was invited to speak to groups and wow. so on and so yeah. we we ran the the antique business for well, 10 or 15 years or so. Uh -huh. I, I bought a big, big place and built a big shop. It was, uh, had three floors in it. Wow. And it was all your stuff? Yeah. Wow. You yeah. used to buy estates too. And uh, you had mentioned that uh, for a little while you were in, uh, you had a, a booth in uh, Great Barrington. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't turn out very well. Mm -hmm. It uh, probably, I didn't understand it well enough, but mm -hmm. uh, it, the, the rent was more than the sales. Yeah. Yeah. So we did, didn't do that, but. But we uh, did shows, and Washington, Connecticut, Florida, Florida, mm -hmm. and so you were up and down the East Coast doing antique shows. What uh, predominantly your stuff was guns, and your wife's stuff were households. Oh, uh, no, we kind of expanded into everything. Other areas, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we did that for quite a while. Now, I know you're somewhere along the line, you got into heavy machinery or heavier machinery. Oh, that was just a hobby. Uh-huh. Like, what, what was it? <laughs> like, uh, well, I know you do, you still do hit and miss engines, right? No, I sold my collection. Oh, really? I had a collection of engines and a collection of uh, tractors. Wow. And so I was always doing something with What kind of what kind of tractor? The International Harvester or John, John Deere? John, all John Deere? Yeah. Yeah. Some of the old vintage ones and Oh yeah, they're yeah. all vintage. Now, did you buy them and restore them, or did you just buy them and collect them and then sell them? I bought them and fixed them. Yeah. I didn't restore them. Uh -huh. I got them so they'd run and I could take them to shows. Right, right. But <clears throat> see, that automotive training you had came in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Down the road, right? <laughs> yeah. So you, but you still do. Uh, Generally, like iron works, right? Or blacksmithing. Blacksmithing? Yeah. Now that started, IBM had a program where if you were going to retire beforehand, you were eligible to take courses in certain subjects. So I decided that I wanted to take blacksmithing. Right. So I signed up for- And IBM offered this program? Yeah, oh, they, they would pay for it. Wow. 
-hmm. pay the tuition, mm -hmm. pay some of your expenses. Sure. Yeah. So I signed up for uh, a course in Landis Valley Farm Museum in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a two-week course in uh, Quaker Village. They had the worst hurricane and flood down there that uh, a lot of people got drowned. And, While you were there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Now, this one guy from Philadelphia who was a gunsmith, so we kind of got together at the at the museum where the classes were held. Right. And um, he came there with a trailer and uh, parked it in a trailer park for the two weeks. Mm -hmm. And the manager of the trailer park had to chain the trailer to tree because it was on the river banks. Oh. And, uh, and they were all flowing. Yeah. Probably, right? Yeah. So there was uh, some drownings there. And uh, well, you picked a hell of a two weeks to go get yeah. your course, yeah. So, so he, he uh, they were staying, he and his wife were staying in a, a motel. And they, the trailer park got flooded out, so uh, he went to a motel, and then there was the river between the museum and the motel, and he couldn't get back to the motel. Oh boy. So he stayed in our rooms for several days. And anyway, that was uh, it was a nice experience. Well, sure. And in addition to that, did you get the course in, or was that canceled? What's that? The blacksmithing course was it canceled? No, it was not canceled. But they took the uh, course was held in a blacksmith shop, the original one at the museum. Oh. And so they had planned to have forges outside around. Uh, the uh, blacksmith shop and one forge inside. Mm -hmm. Well, it just poured for days and days. Right. So we had to put all the forges inside this little building smoke and down. eat smoke for a week or two. <laughs> but, it, but you got your you got your course in anyway. Yeah. yeah. And that uh, that propelled you because I know you do. You still do blacksmithing at the Dutchess County Fair, right? Yeah. And uh, obviously they didn't have the fair last year because of the pandemic. But uh, they're having it this year again? Yes, we are. And I, I happened to look it up during the break that this year it's August 24th through the 29th. Yeah. So what are you in one of the buildings and you set up uh, well, like we, a demonstration of blacksmithing there? We have our own building, a blacksmith shop, which we built we had a, a, a post and beam group that, that belonged to the museum mm -hmm. and they built it. I was part of it. And so we have our own blacksmith shop. And Kevin, who was with us today, uh, does that as well. That's right. Yeah. And uh, so what do you demonstrate for the, hopefully the younger kid generation, how to actually do that, right? You take, them, you take them through the process of blacksmithing? Yeah, we demonstrate uh -huh. and make objects so they can see us do it. Uh -huh. Hopefully it catches on to a couple of them, keep that going. <laughs> that, that, that uh, you know, that tree. So, so, so you'll be there this next month, August 24th. Yeah. Uh, every day? That, that it's open? Yeah, yeah. yeah. every day. Uh -huh. From what time to what time, do you know? Oh, about nine to about, about six. Oh, long day, yeah. 
And do you have, is it a you know do you have a lot of people coming in for the demonstrations generally? Well, we have big doors in the front of the blacksmith shop, uh -huh. and we have bleachers outside where the public can sit on the bleachers and watch through the doors. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, so they don't have to get into the the heat. Yeah, I'm sure it's hot as hell in there in the summertime, right? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And then you explain you explain each aspect of the, and what do you actually fabricate something while you're there? Well, I make cowbells, mm -hmm. and Kevin makes crosses. Yes, he's for... he's given me one in the past. Thank you. because uh, he's an iron worker himself. So yeah, that's right. It's second nature to him too. Very accomplished. He is indeed, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, very good. Um, definitely going to have to go up there and check you out in uh, in August at the Dutchess County Fair. And um, so the building that you're in is dedicated to what you're doing. There's no there's no other displays there, right? No, he's also in the agricultural. Uh, there's a barn that has... <clears throat> Everything got to do with uh, agricultural and history from period from late 1800s to the early 1900s. And what do you focus on there? Like farm? Farm store. Uh, the whole agricultural life. Mm -hmm. Country living. I see. Okay. Uh, so what do you do? Go back and forth between the two displays? or? Yeah. 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 No. Are they near one another at least then? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have this big museum building with exhibits inside, mm -hmm. and I uh, am in charge of the country store. Uh, the blacksmith shop. Blacksmith shop. And the what's it? What's it? Exhibit. What's that? It's a bunch of articles on exhibited on a table, mm -hmm. and the question is, what is it? Okay. And they have to guess. That was my first question. What is it? <laughs> and uh, then they go around to the side, and it tells them what each article was. <clears throat> there's, there's twelve items that he changes every year. Mm -hmm. Three of them are agricultural. Three of them are tools, trade, trade, and three of them are household items. Yeah, interesting. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you up there, and uh, I want to say I really appreciate you coming up here today. It was a great honor having you here, and well, thank uh, you. I'll thank you again for your service to our country, and uh, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month at the Dutchess County Fair. Asa Beckwith, thank you so much. And Kevin Warren, thank you so much, guys.